Hi, this is Stanley, and in this tutorial we're going to be putting together a book. When I say book, I mean a novel. So, make sure you've got a cup of tea and a biscuit, and let's get started. Okay, so we've got quite a lot to cover, actually. We're going to start off by just setting up our new document, and then we'll be looking at um, setting up some styles, paragraph styles, character styles. We'll even be looking at uh, nested styles, even cover a little bit of rep. Uh, right at the end we will be finishing off with a table of contents and because there's quite a lot to do I've broken it up into several easy to follow tutorials. So welcome to part one. We're going to be looking at setting up a new document and then we will be importing some text and looking at some there's some formatting issues that I want to correct and then we'll be setting up some very simple paragraph styles. I've opened up my new document dialog box here. Uh, I can see my document in the background because I've got my preview switched on in uh, Adobe InDesign CC. So I can see it. that's quite useful. Uh, my document preset I'm going to leave on default. My intention is to print. Pages. Well, I don't know how many pages I'm going to need, so I'm going to leave it on one. I'm going to leave facing pages ticked, so if it isn't ticked on yours, please tick it. Start page number but one, that's fine. But I'm also going to tick this box here that says primary text frame. Very useful. That's going to put a text frame on the master pages, which is going to help me uh, when I import my text. It's going to help me generate all the necessary pages. Page size. Well, tell you what, we get this down to a five. Margins. I think I'd quite like to change the margins on this. Let's get everything up to fifteen to start with. Break that link, and now I can edit these independently. The top, I think, I'll just get up to twenty. The bottom, I think, I had uh, eighteen when I did this document first of all, so I'm going to leave it at like that. Quite happy with that. If you want to save this as a, a preset, we can do so by clicking on that little icon there and giving it a name and it will appear in the preset list. Okay, so I'm um, quite happy with that now. I don't need a bleeding slug, so I'm just going to click on OK. And OK, there's my document. I think the first thing I'm going to do is, because it's currently called Untitled, is save it. Save or save as, do the same job. And I'm going to dump it on the desktop, and I'm going to call it, this uh, book actually is War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. So I'm going to call it War of the Worlds, and I'm just going to save it on the desktop. Good. Okay, now I can see currently I'm in my Essentials workspace there, not really helping me if I want to start building some styles. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change Essentials uh, to, I think I was going to the advanced. I'm going to reset the advanced to make sure I've got everything that I want in the advanced set and I don't like my tools in a single column so I'm just going to hit that at the top and change it to a double. Those are the only changes I'll be making to my workspace today. Now I'm going to bring in some text. Now the text is it's quite a long document. It's, uh, it's, in, it's the entire first book of War of the Worlds. Uh, which I have uh, downloaded from Project Gutenberg online. It's all free now. It's out of copyright, so it's free and perfectly legal to do this. So let me bring this uh, this text file in. It is a TXT file. So I'm going to say File and Place, or Command D or Control D on the PC, and I'm going to locate this text. I put it in this folder here on the desktop. Locate it. There it is. All the worlds TXT, and I'm going to open it. And you can see I've got my loaded text icon there, and I'm because I've already got a text frame in the master pages. You can see as I just move my cursor in and out of the margined area, the text icon goes into brackets because it's detecting a frame underneath. Now, ordinarily, if I didn't have a primary text frame on the master page, I'd have to hold down a shift key to get auto flow. But I'm doing it this way because as and when I generate more pages as I'm formatting the text, I want it to keep generating the pages and remove them 
as necessary. So uh, having it on the, uh, the primary text frame is going to allow me to do that. It saves me all the hassle. So all I need to do now is just click in the top left hand corner of my margin just so it will fill that from margin to margin. You can see it's just filled that page and for a brief second I had some overset text down here. I can see a little indicator but it's fixed. So let's have a look in the pages panel, see what we've got. Well, 131 pages. I didn't have to do anything. That primary text frame has done all that work for me. Fantastic. So, I'm just updating my save. <clears throat> now the first thing I'm going to do now is, because I'm working with some text, I always, always like to turn on my heat and characters, then I can see what's happening, see where all my paragraphs are. So there's two ways we can do that. You could just go up to the bottom here to your view options and select hidden characters, or it's right at the bottom of the type menu. Now, oh, didn't actually, there we go, it's turned on. Hey, hey, what are all these? They shouldn't be there. I know what they are, they're uh, end of paragraph symbols. Um, they seem to be on every single line of, of text. That's not uh, what I expected. Um, so all the way through, hmm. Yeah, I think it's um, it's just how they've scanned it, I think, um, when they've scanned these old books. It's a real problem, actually, because if I want to uh, apply or target a, a, a paragraph with a style, then I've got lots of problems there because I've got hundreds and hundreds of, st of paragraphs. It's just ridiculous. Um, so I, I need to find a way of fixing this. Now, just for this tutorial, I'm just going to remove this little bit of text up here. I'm only going to start from here. Chapter one. Just going to remove that to make my life a little bit easier for today. Okay, that's where I'm going to start. But I've still got all these uh, carriage returns to deal with. Quite a big problem. So um, I've opened the document, so I'm going to fix it while it's opened, and then I'm going to show you another way. Let's show you this, this way first. So I'm going to go to Edit and Find and Change. I've just hit the keyboard shortcut, Command F or Control F on your PC. Now make sure you're in text. Find what? Well, whenever you've got these sorts of problems, it's always just kind of think it through logically. What is it that I want to do? Well, I want to get rid of all of these end of paragraphs. That's fine. But I can't just say find what an end of paragraph and then remove it because I'm going to end up losing my, my true paragraphs. That would be no help whatsoever. Now, what I want to do is straight away is just have a quick look for any pattern that, that's going through this story. So just come out of find and change for a second. I'm just going to click on done, come out of there. I'm just going to slide down and as I just slide down using this, I just jump to a couple more pages, I can see every time I've got seemingly a true paragraph here, true into paragraph, I haven't just got the one carriage return there, I've actually got two. Now my suspicions seem to be revealing that that is the case all the way through. That's great because I can work with that. So whenever you've got these problems going on, then you need to look for a pattern. So there is my pattern. Every time there's a true end of paragraph, I've got two. So I'm going to work with that one. Rather than remove anything, I'm just going to start off by preserving something. So I'm going to say find what, I'm going to say, well, tell you what, find an end of paragraph, and that carrot P is the end of paragraph. And then I'm going to say find another one. So what that's doing essentially is saying find two together. Well, what do we want to change it to? Good question. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Um, well, it does, but what I'm saying doesn't really matter. What you want to do here is is put something in there that you are 100% certain does not appear anywhere else in that story. And what I like to do is things like this. Three pound signs. I'm pretty convinced that there's nowhere in that story uh, appears three pound signs together. So I'm quite happy to, to, to do it that, to change it to the three pound signs. Very confident. Obviously, I wouldn't want to change to something like, you know, the number one, because number one appears somewhere, then you're going to be doomed. Okay, so search, yes, the entire story or whole document. Okay, leave it on story. Good. Say so find. Okay, so what I'm going to do is find the first one and test it. Always useful to test it. So find next. Okay, it's 
definitely found two end of paragraphs. I'm just going to change that to make sure it's working all right. Yep, I can see it's working all right. Good. And I'm going to be confidently then click on change all and we've got 634. So 634, 635 paragraphs. Seems reasonable. Okay. Fantastic. That looks, looks good to me. Quite happy with that. So what I need to do now is go back to my find what, delete one of those carrot peas, go into change two and make sure you delete all that lot. Now, I want to get rid of all the other ones, all the single ones. So what I want to do is change it, so I've found and find it with this, and then I'm going to change it and put it, uh, change it to, sorry, a space. So a single space, that's what it should be. Let's find one. Oh, why won't it find? Oh, because I've got selection here, look. I'm going to change selection to story, and let me say find next. Now it's found one. Okay, change. Looks good to me. Change all. Crikey, 2736. Okay. So far, so good. So I've now currently lost all my paragraphs. But I haven't because I've preserved them. So what I need to do is say find what and then recall my paragraphs by finding the three pound signs I put in. Now don't forget I had a space in the change too, so it's always I always get into a habit of just deleting, clicking there and backspace or something. Because if you've left a space in there, you might end up causing all sorts of problems. So just make sure there's nothing in there. Well, change to what? Well, I tell you what. In the paragraph. Find next. Found what? Change. Change all. I'll remember that number. Good. And then we're going to click done. Now, just going to fit that to the window. Looks good to me. Quick scroll through. Yep, looking good. Fix that problem. Now, <clears throat> bearing in mind, I've just done that. And actually, if I said file and place, and you switched on the import options, and you opened the uh, War of the Worlds TXT. Let's just click open. You will see there's my text import options. I do actually have an option here to remove extra carriage returns. Remove at end of every line, which is exactly what we needed. So yes, we could have done it this way as well. So just remember, you just need to switch on your import options to get this panel open. Okay. So far, so good. So I'm just going to update my save, Control S or Command S on the Mac, and I'm just going to now get started on setting up some basic styles. I think first of all, I'd quite like to just select everything and give it a basic style. Something to start me off with. So I'm going to double click inside there. Now, I know two clicks will select a word, one, two, three, a line, one, two, three, four, a paragraph, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, oh, you can see the problem, five will select everything in the story, but in all honesty, edit, select all, or look at, there's the shortcut. Command A or Control A, much quicker, messing around all that clicking. So now it's all selected, I want to create a paragraph style, but I'm not going to do it using the panel there. I'm going to go up to the top of the control panel. And I want to change the font family from uh, Minion Pro to Myriad Pro. So I'm just going to type in MY in there and it will take me to the all those. Um, yep, Myriad Pro regular. And I'm just going to change the size there to 14 point. Uh, yep, that's nice and easy to read. Okay, so that's all I'm actually going to do uh, right now, but what I would like to do is just preserve those few attributes as a paragraph style so I can edit all the text later on. Um, so come back for part two and we'll find out how we're going to do that.